All right, let's talk about the answers to this. So uh, worksheet, vapor pressure, and boiling point, let's begin. So first thing, uh, intermolecular forces are how much things stick together. The more the molecules or particles in a substance stick together, the stronger their intermolecular forces. If they stick together more, they can't vaporize as much because vaporization means splitting apart. So if they stick together more, that means not so much splitting apart, not much vaporizing, so low vapor pressure which means low volatility, because if the vapor pressure is low, it's not evaporating very much, which not evaporating much means low volatility. And then if it's not evaporating much, you have to heat it up a lot before it starts to really evaporate. In order to force it to evaporate, you gotta heat it up, so high boiling point. You have to add a lot of energy to make it happen. Weak intermolecular forces means the particles separate very easily, which means that it vaporizes a lot, so high vapor pressure because it's vaporizing a lot at a given temperature. That means low or high volatility because the more volatile it is, the more it vaporizes. And then uh, that means it boils very easily, very low boiling point because at a very low temperature, it's already got enough energy for the particles to separate. And so that, just, yeah, it just happens with lower temperatures when something is not holding together very strongly. A substance with high vapor pressure tends to evaporate quickly, whereas something with low vapor pressure tends to evaporate slowly. Define volatility. Volatility is basically a measure of how quickly something evaporates at a given temperature. So volatility means having a higher vapor pressure. and more easily evaporating. Now, you cannot change the intermolecular force of a substance, but you can change the temperature, and the temperature as it rises will give the particles more energy and cause them to break apart more easily as the temperature rises, which makes it evaporates more as the temperature rises so vapor pressure increases as temperature increases because rising, raising the temperature makes it evaporate more. Liquids boil when vapor pressure is equal to atmospheric, aka surrounding pressure. I say surrounding pressure because if you use a pressure cooker, for example, that means it's higher than atmospheric pressure, which means higher pressure means it needs to reach a higher pressure or higher temperature in order for the vapor pressure to match that surrounding pressure and then boil, which is why in a pressure cooker it boils at a higher temperature above 100 degrees Celsius. Okay, basic graph interpretation. What's the y-axis? That's vapor pressure. What's the x-axis? That's temperature. We'll specify degrees Celsius. As temperature rises, vapor pressure what? Um, as the temperature goes up, notice for all of these, as you increase the temperature, vapor pressure rises. That's for pentane. This is for trichloromethane. See, as I go up, the temperature rises. Sorry, as I go, as I increase the temperature, vapor pressure rises. And then for water, as the temperature goes up, as I go this way, the temperature is increasing. At four degrees, the vapor pressure is here. At 60 degrees, it's up here. 80 degrees, it's up here. 100 degrees, it's way up here. So for all these substances, as, vapor, as the temperature goes up, vapor pressure rises. After all, the higher the temperature, the faster it evaporates. At any given temperature, which of the th three substances has the highest vapor pressure? At 20 degrees Celsius, that's pentane. At 40 degrees Celsius, still pentane. At 60 degrees Celsius, there's water, trichloromethane, and then pentane is somewhere off the charts. So, pentane. What's the, which one's got the lowest vapor pressure? Lowest vapor pressure at any temperature is water. No matter what temperature you pick, at 40, it's down here, whereas trichloromethane's here, and pentane's way up here. At 60, water's only down here, whereas trichloromethane's up here and pentane's off the chart. At 80 degrees Celsius, same thing, water's the lowest. At 100 degrees Celsius, water's the lowest. The most volatile is the one with the highest vapor pressure. That's pentane. Least vapor pressure is water. 
that makes it the least volatile. Which of the three substances has the strongest intermolecular forces? The one with the lowest vapor pressure is because the particles are sticking together most strongly. So that means water. It has the most sticking together of particles, which means it's evaporating the least because those particles don't easily separate. Weakest intermolecular forces, the particles easily separate. That's why pentane evaporates so much. All right, onward. All right, let's do this. Determine the boiling point of pentane at a pressure of 760 millimeters of mercury. So the boiling point of pentane at 760 millimeters of mercury. So I find the pressure, and I follow it over to the pentane line. I trace it down to about here, and we're going to call that approximately, let's see, 30 degrees is here. So it's almost at the 40, but not quite. So I'm going to call it about 38 degrees Celsius would be the temperature pentane boils at at 760, approximately. As for trichloromethane, it says 400 millimeters of mercury. So I find this, trace it over to the trichloromethane line, and then trace it down to about here. Now 50 is here, so it's a little more than 50, or a little more than halfway between 50 and 60. I'm going to estimate 56 degrees Celsius, though there's some wiggle room in that, so if someone estimated a bit above or below that, that'd be fine. That said, it's clearly less than 60, so someone better estimate more than less than 60. It's also clearly way above 40, so nobody better be picking that number. Even 50 would be like, no, it's not 50. All right, determine, next question, determine the boiling point of water at a pressure of 300 millimeters of mercury. So 300 is about here between 200 and 400. Trace that over to here, and then trace it down. It's roughly 70 degrees Celsius. All right, at any given pressure, which substance has the highest boiling point? Which substance has the strongest weakest in molecular forces? Which one has the highest boiling point? Well, that'd be the one with the lowest vapor pressure. Now that said, the other way to look at that is at any given pressure which has the highest boiling point, just pick any given pressure, pentane, this temperature, it's at the first 600 pentane is this temperature, for 600 trichloromethane is here, for 600 water is here, water's got the highest temperature. At 200, water still has the highest temperature. At 800, water has the highest temperature. You'll notice that no matter what it is, water has the highest boiling point. And highest boiling point means strongest intermolecular forces. Determine the pressure needed to produce a boiling point of 40 degrees Celsius for tet tetrachloromethane. All right, 40 degrees Celsius, trace it up. That looks like about here. Trace it over. Looks like maybe just barely under 200, so I would understand choosing 200. Or maybe, I'm, I think it's maybe 195 millimeters of mercury. I could totally understand why someone picked 200, though. It's almost right there. Honestly, anything between 190 and 220 or so is probably just fine. Determine the pressure needed to produce a boiling point of 50 degrees Celsius for water. Okay, 50 degrees Celsius for water. Here's 50 between 40 and 60. Trace it up to the water line. Trace it over. Looks like roughly 100 um, millimeters of mercury. Determine the pressure needed to produce a boiling point of 25 degrees Celsius for pentane. All right, 25 degrees Celsius, well that's 30. And then 25 would be halfway in between 20 and 30, so it's about there. Trace it up to the pentane line. So let's trace that up to about here. It looks like close to 400-ish. All right, water boils at 85 degrees in Cusco, Peru, a city at about 13,000 feet of altitude. Determine the pressure up there. So, cool, find 85 degrees Celsius. That's 90, that's 80. 85 is about here, halfway in between. Trace it up, more or less straight. Trace it over, looks like about 500 millimeters of mercury. All right, that's it. That's how you do it. Happy studies.